All right, today we're working on this Samsung dryer. I've had it for at least eight years now. Um, and I just used it recently and it got about halfway through a dry cycle and it left the clothes damp. I tried to run it again, clothes were still damp and I reached in, it wasn't warming up. So I'm about 90% sure that uh, it's the heating element that's gone out. Um, so we're gonna work on replacing that together today. I have it on order should be arriving soon and uh, so I'm going to start the video now and then when the new part gets here we'll uh, go ahead and install it um, so yeah this is I, I don't know what the model number is it's not listed oh here's the model number right here so if this will focus there we go there's the model number if you want to pause and take a look at the model number it's right there otherwise I will note it in the uh, in the comments below all right, the next step is, of course, you want to unplug your dryer because you don't know what type of electricity you're going to encounter in here. You don't know what's uh, energized or not, so always unplug that before you open up anything in the dryer. The floor is wet back here because I just mopped, so no big deal. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out this screw here and that screw there, uh, and that'll take the top off. Um, we're also, I noticed that this power cord is out a little bit of the the sleeve, uh, the retainer clip here. I'm not sure what the official name for that is. So we're gonna try to get that in there and tighten that up too, just so that we don't have any problems in the future. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take out these two screws and take the top of the uh, dryer off. All right, once you, have, uh, once you have those two screws out, this just picks up and slides back at the same time, and then you can take the whole cover off there. All right, once you have the top cover off, go ahead and inspect your your drive belt here, um, this goes down, it wraps around the entire drum, and it goes down to a motor underneath, and there's also an idler pulley there. So make sure this has got a good amount of tension on it, try to pull on it. Um, if there's not very much tension, you could have a problem with your idler pulley. And then also inspect the belt for any kind of cracking. Um, you can kind of roll the drum by hand to inspect the whole thing, but make sure there's no cracking. If there is, you might as well order a belt and replace that while you're in here so you don't have to go back in here again anytime soon. The next thing we're going to do is on the front uh, door, we're going to take off this screw and this screw, and we're going to remove the door, get that out of the way, um, and then go to the next step. All right, now that the door's out of the way, we're going to go ahead and pull this lid trap out of here, set it to the side, and we're going to be removing these screws around here. Uh, looks like there are five of them, if I count correctly. You don't have to take out the latch screws here. But there's five screws that go around, and then we should be able to remove this face. All right, I spoke too soon, but because uh, it, it looks like we're going to have to take this top panel off first before we can take the front panel off, um, because it looks like it slides up and then out. So it can't slide up with this here, so we're going to have to take this off. It looks like there's three screws across the top that are going to have to come out, and then we should be able to remove this top panel. It most likely has a plug behind it that we'll have to disconnect, of course, because here's all our electronics. Um, but what I wanted to tell you about, when you remove these screws, just take note. There are four of them. I miscounted earlier. I said five. These two here are different than the bottom two. So just remember that the bottom two are a coarse thread. I don't know if that's going to focus, but those are a coarse thread screw. And then these ones are a finer thread. There's two. And they have like a some kind of orange coating on them that's probably like um, to prevent it from rattling out. Um, so those two are the ones that go right here where the door opens on that side. So that's a finer thread and it's got the orange uh, stuff on there. And then the, the coarser thread ones go at the bottom. So just remember that. All right, so I've got those three screws out that are on the top. Then this just pulls out like that and then it will lift off, but for now just leave it sitting out in this position because you've got to disconnect these two connectors here and then you can remove the whole front panel. All right, now that the front panel's gone, we've got two screws right here on this side and we've got two screws on this side. Take those out and since we already took those four out down there, the whole front panel should lift off at this point. All right, once you have those four screws up, you can kind of pull up on the, on the front edge of this panel and it will pop up and off, uh, but don't don't do it too hard because you have another safety here that you have to disconnect. I believe this is, yeah, this is the door open safety. So you have to disconnect this and then you can pull the whole front panel off. 
All right, the next thing you're gonna to want to do is take off this exhaust uh, cover. So this is where the lint trap goes down inside, right? Um, and this is where all of the hot air escapes to go outside. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to remove this screw, that screw, and then there's two more on this side there and there. All right, now that I have the screws removed, I can just grab the bottom here and pull it out a little bit and then it should pop down. And yep, looks like we need to clean that out a little bit. I recently brushed this out uh, with an actual brush, but sometimes it's tough to get in those little places that you can't see. So that's actually not too bad, but I'm, I'll, cut, I'll clean out all the little nooks and crannies while I'm in here. Uh, but here you can see, here's our blower motor right here. All right, so on this side, next to the blower motor, right here, this is our heating element. I don't know how well you can see that. I don't have a light on this camera right now. But that's our heating element in there. You can see the red and blue wire there. Um, so we're going to have to take this whole assembly out. First thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect this connector here to get it out of the way so we don't damage it when we pull that out. And then we're going to remove this screw here. And then the whole thing should slide out towards us. All right, I've got that one screw out. And of course, I've got this wire disconnected and kind of pushed out of the way. Um, and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take it and kind of wiggle it back and forth like that because it does go directly into the back in the back there. I don't know if you can see that opening back there. There we go. There's an opening back there that kind of slides into. That's where the hot air uh, blows from this uh, heating element blows through the back of the dryer and it comes out up there. Um, so we're gonna now pull this assembly out towards us and I'm hoping I have enough slack in this wire that I can get it out and we'll, we'll have to disconnect those wires but I should be able to pull it out far enough to where I can access those wires. And remember we did unplug the power to this dryer because these are bare connectors right here and those could be electrified if this was plugged in. So obviously you wanna make sure that's unplugged before you touch these bare wires here, uh, this bare metal. But uh, we're gonna pull this assembly out, disconnect these two wires, and then we should be able to access the whole thing. All right, I was not able to get it out through that small opening right there without damaging it. Um, so what I have to do is remove these two screws right here. Yeah, it's pretty dirty in here. Um, but I'm gonna remove those two screws there that's on this little stand. And then in the back, there's just a tab that slides in you can feel it from underneath if you reach underneath the dryer. So I'm gonna take these two screws out and then this little stand should come out and then I should be able to pull that, that whole dryer element out. All right, I've got that little stand out of the way. You can see those two tabs that I was talking about at the back, they just kind of clip in. And then there's the screw holes through the front. So I've got this halfway pulled out. I was able to disconnect the, the black, I'm sorry, the, the red and the blue wires here. Um, and then I'm gonna have to disconnect this blue, this black, and this blue and this black. These are our sensors, uh, our heat sensors, I believe. Um, I'm not sure why there's two of them. Exactly why there's two sensors. Maybe one is a heat sensor and one is some other kind of sensor, but we have to disconnect uh, all those wires and then we'll be able to pull this whole assembly out. But you can see there's the heating element right there and uh, we'll be able to inspect it for damage once we get it out of here. All right, so we've got the assembly completely removed. You can see the wiring harness there. Do yourself a favor, take a picture of that while it's still connected to the side of the unit with your camera uh, or your phone or whatever. And make sure you take a picture of that first so you know how it hooks back up. Uh, but here's our heating element here. You can see inside here, it's kind of like a big coil that goes back and forth. It looks like it loops around twice. Um, there's kind of like a sandwich wafer type of thing in here. Um, and then there's a kind of like a, an electric coil that, that loops around the top and then it goes down to the bottom and loops around the bottom and that that whole thing heats up and that's what gives you your heat for your hot air. Um, but you can see from the top view of this unit, there are six screws. See the three there. Oh, I'm sorry. There's seven because there's four on this side. Um, there you go. Right. And uh, once you take those out, this whole top will come off and the heating element is literally kind of sandwiched in there. Um, I believe the kit that I ordered came with these two new sensors. So we'll be replacing those as well, just in case those are the problem. There is a chance that the heating element is okay, but the sensors are bad. So they're telling the system to not heat the, the heating coil. Um, but I'm pretty sure the kit I ordered has all three in there. So we'll replace all three and then we'll put it all back together in the reverse order. So now I just have to wait for the Amazon guy to get here and uh, we'll get that element replaced. 
All right, while I was waiting for the Amazon guy, I went ahead and vac used my shop vac here. I just have this little, this nice little unit. Uh, th uh, it's a smaller shop vac by Craftsman. Uh, it's a little five gallon, four horsepower. So it's not super powerful, uh, but it's nice because you can get in some pretty tight areas. As you can see, I've got a pretty narrow walkway right there because I moved my washing machine out of the way. It's supposed to be right here. But uh, I was able to get all of the extra lint and stuff out of this guy. There, now that it's focused, all that lint that was in there. And I also was able to get my narrow nozzle into here and vacuum out in between the fins on the motor. There was quite a bit of lint. There's still one trapped right there that I gotta get. There's quite a bit of lint like that there, uh, trapped in the motor. And uh, also I was able to get all the lint that was in there and all the extra stuff. What I, surprised me about vacuuming everything is it all came out relatively easily, uh, which tells me that maybe it's inefficient. Uh, there's places where the lint just gathers, because you would think with this motor spinning and blowing, you've, you've seen how hard the air blows out your exhaust vent outside of your house. The air is moving pretty fast, um, and it's pretty good volume. So you would think that all of the little lint that I just vacuumed up that moved very easily, uh, I didn't have to scrub or anything to get it, it just came right out. You would think that it would uh, it would just get blown out the back of the house, but it does get trapped in places, so maybe these dryer manufacturers need to think about making their system a little bit more efficient, like that channel down in the bottom that collected all that lint that I showed you when we started. I don't think there's any reason for that channel to be there. They should have made that more smooth so that it allows the airflow to just suck it right out the back, but what do I know? I'm just a uh, DIY fixer man. <laughs> So anyway, uh, we got her all cleaned up. We're ready, we're ready for the new part. Again, just waiting on Amazon. All right, the Amazon guy just got here and delivered this kit. Um, it's the DC47-00019 Alpha. If you search that number on Amazon, you'll find this kit. It was 39 bucks, I think, with tax. Um, yeah, 39 with tax, so it's a little bit less than that without tax. And uh, you can see here, if it'll focus, it's not going to focus. Anyway, it just says what model of Samsung's it's uh, it's uh, compatible with. But I'm going to show you open it up. But I, just what I want to point out real quick is 39 bucks. I'm doing this myself. And I've only, even with shooting the video already, uh, while I'm going, I've still only got about 30 minutes in. So let's, let's say it takes an hour by the time I get it all put back together. And uh, a service guy would have charged anywhere between 200 and 300 bucks. So by my calculation, I'm saving myself at least 200 bucks by doing this myself. So not bad. All right, so inside the box was this brand new heating element here. Show you how to install that. We've also got four components here. Um, we've got, this is the thermostat. This is the thermistor or thermistor, however you wanna say that, um, which is right there. So we're gonna replace those two components and then this is just the connector where the heating element goes. These little spade connectors will plug in there. And then uh, we'll replace those three components and then we should be good to go. I think this is a universal kit because these two other ones, these look like they're for like a different type of model or something. We're not gonna be using those. All right, so first we're gonna be taking these two components off. Uh, there's two screws on each of them because they're also holding this little sandwich uh, section together. So we have to take those off first and then we'll get inside and replace the third the element the heating element All right, we've got those two components removed. I just toss them over there uh, There's the screws and then we're gonna take out these uh, Seven screws around the edges and then this top cover should come off All right, so we've got the top cover off you can see this thing looks like it got really hot at some point um, Like it's it's very black compared to the the new one that looks like that right um but like it looks like maybe it overheated because this this metal has got like wavy marbleized lines in it there's a lot of like kind of charring in here i don't think the the metal's compromised so i should be good well actually <laughs> i don't have to worry about that because the the new one comes with the new metal uh so i don't have to worry about that charring at all um but i do have to configure this uh connector a little bit if you look, hopefully this will focus. I don't know if it's going to focus that closely. There we go. There's a tiny little metal tab right there that I'm going to have to bend with a pair of needle nose pliers. There we go. It's focused. 
See that tiny tab by my finger? If I bend that little tab, then this should poke through the back. This is like a ceramic connector. Um, and this, this one also has a little tab. Um, so basically I'll have to bend that little tab and you want to be careful because this, this ceramic can be a little bit fragile. Um, but then on the new unit, you can see here that new spade connector has got those same little tabs on it. There we go. We focused, um, and it'll push through and then you'll bend one of those little tabs over to keep it in place. Um, so I'm going to go get some needle nose pliers and we'll get that knocked out. All right, we've got the new connectors installed. Uh, make sure you bend those tabs on the new one after you, after you poke it through. Make sure you bend those tabs up. I, I bent one up and then one down. Um, because otherwise, if you forget to do that, when you go to press the connector on that's over there, um, this is going to push through and you may not be able to get it back through again once it's installed in the machine. So make sure you bend those tabs over. Now we just have to align all these holes and uh, put this little sandwich back together. All right, here's a little pro tip for you. Notice that on each of these uh, tabs that have a screw hole on them, there's two holes. Only one of them had a screw in it. What you can do is use a small screwdriver like I have here and use it to slide through that hole and it lines everything up and then you can get that screw in there easier. Because this metal is pretty flimsy and it bends a lot so um, you'll have to kind of like form it back together. All right, I've got the seven screws back in. Not too bad. Um, make sure once you're done though, make sure those two lead wires there, they're not making contact. It's hard to tell on camera, but this right here, that's uh, about an inch from the edge. So just make sure that it's not contacting the edges whatsoever, uh, or else this new one will short out and you'll have a bad time, because uh, then you're gonna be doing this all over again. So make sure that those, those metal wires there, or those element leads, are not touching the outside case at all, or, or not even close. All right, now we're gonna install the new thermostat here. Uh, and then the new thermistor or thermistor, however, again, however you want to say it, install that there, and then we can put this whole thing back in the dryer. All right, those two new components are on. Uh, I'm going to stick it back in, hook everything up, and then I'm just going to reassemble the whole dryer in the opposite order that I disassembled it, and then we're going to test this baby out. All right, we've got it all put back together. I just turned it on. You can see it's running. I don't have anything in it right now. I just want to see if it heats up. I'm gonna let it run for a minute and I'm gonna open the door. As long as I feel hot air in there, we know we're good to go. Oh yeah, as soon as I opened that door, I could feel the heat just hit me in the face. Feels a lot hotter than before. So we know we're good to go. I'm gonna throw this uh, load that we had waiting for in there and uh, we are good to go just in time because we're leaving for vacation tomorrow. So we need to get some laundry done tonight. Hope this helped y'all. Have a good night.